All I'm gonna say is you need to try cooking this because I'm super impressed with how tasty this is. Hey everyone, I'm Dave, and today we're making the world's best marry me chicken. Well, at least we hope so. As always on this channel, we look up the top recipes, we test them out, see if Google is really offering us the best search result, and we get to try some really good food and see how it turns out. Today we're going with marry me chicken, which I had never heard of, but someone requested it down in the comments, and I said, yeah, let's give it a shot. It actually looks really good. I got the name, I guess, because... <laughs> If you can make this, supposedly any man you're trying to get to marry you will marry you because the chicken is that good. I don't know. I I'll be a judge of it, I guess, because I am a man and I can decide if I want to marry myself at the end. So let's go ahead and look up a recipe. I've got my computer here. World's best marry me chicken. And it looks like the top result is from littlesunnykitchen.com. Now I've seen this served on top of pasta and I've seen it served just straight up. This looks like it's straight up. I will say, disclaimer, I'm sure you could if you wanted to make some spaghetti as well and put the spaghetti underneath the, the chicken. Like, you know, serve the spaghetti and put the chicken on top. Probably be delicious. Uh, make it a more complete meal. I might, might do that, might not do that. I don't know. We'll see how I'm feeling. But first it says we need three large boneless skinless chicken breasts. We're going to get started. And I only could get a giant pack of chicken breasts. So we're just going to use three of them. I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, there's like seven in there, but we only need three of them. And it says we want to turn them into smaller cutlets. So I'm just going to pull out one at a time, I guess. There we go. There's a giant piece of chicken. Let me get my knife. Now, as far as making them into cutlets, basically you just want to cut them in half, but not like this or like this. What's that? Perpendicular? Parallel? I don't know. This way. You're going to cut them in half this way. Because if they're too thick, I don't know if you've ever tried to cook chicken before. It takes like an eternity to cook a big fat chicken breast like that evenly. And you don't want raw chicken. So there you go. So you'll end up with six pieces like this. Let me cut the three first. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to reread one part of this because it talks about how to cut this. I'm going to make sure I'm doing it right. But that part should be fine. I'm going to at least do that three times. So I'm just taking off this extra piece of fat. It's not really going to be great eating this piece too. I mean, I don't know. Just trying to clean it up a little bit. But yeah, I mean, okay, so as always, I like to start off my videos by mentioning I am not a professional cook. There's plenty of professional cooks on YouTube, but you know, I think that what we're doing here is we're making videos for the average cook, the non-pro cook, the cook who's had no training, but wants to cook something good for their family, which is basically where I'm at, is I just wanna make some yummy food for the family. And this is how I do it. I look up recipes online and I just try to cook them and sometimes I screw up. Sometimes I do well and sometimes recipes come out good, sometimes they don't. I'll say this, if you go back historically and watch the other videos that I've made, there's lots of them, you know, they're all good. So you can go back and check some of the older ones out if you're watching this one. Usually the stuff comes out really good. And even if it's not the world's best, in my opinion, it's usually something worth cooking. So I'll say that there's a few times, a few times where I've been like, Ugh, I wouldn't make this recipe again because I know of some better recipe. But in general, I'm almost always enjoying what I cook. So feel free to cook along. I've had some people message me saying they tried some stuff and really liked it. I know the nacho recipe a bunch of people have as their normal nacho recipe now ever since my video. So check that one out if you haven't. Let me wash my hands. I want to read something else here. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it says the cutlets should be a quarter inch thickness. I feel like some of these are bigger than a quarter inch. Hmm. A quarter inch. It says if they're thicker, pound them down thinner. But in the picture of this recipe, I'll be honest, these look a lot bigger than a quarter inch. So check out this picture on this recipe. Can I show you this easily? <laughs> look at this. That's like three quarters of an inch. That's like the size of my chicken. So I'm almost feeling like that's a typo. I don't know. And none of their pictures look like a quarter inch chicken. They all look like mine, which is like three quarters. I think I'm going to leave it, guys. I mean, I guess if you want to, you could smash it down with a mallet, put in a Ziploc bag, smash it down. But mine look about the size of the pictures, so I'm going to keep it like this. And there's parts where it's a quarter inch, like right here maybe. But then there's fat sides that have three quarters, which is exactly like the pictures in the recipe. So we're going to keep it like that. Now, we've got our chicken ready. Let me just move it aside here a little. We're going to get everything else prepped. I just set the chicken over by the stove because this is kind of a two-part operation. Part one, we're going to get all the ingredients prepped and measured over here. And then we're going to head over to the stove and we're actually going to get to cooking. I think it's easier if I kind of walk you through what to get ready first so that when you're actually under the heat of the stove, you're not like, ah, I got to go measure this and measure that. So I try to do it all in stages. We're going to get a non-chickeny cutting board. All right, as far as prep work, let's get three cloves of garlic set up here. That's going to be your next step. And you may use like pre-minced garlic or maybe you have a garlic paste you want to use. But this recipe calls for three cloves 
of garlic like that, peeled and minced. So that's what we're gonna do now. All right, so here's our three garlic cloves. Let's just chop them up really quick. Now in general, when it comes to chicken breast, <laughs> it's not that great of a meat. So I think kind of part of the joke with the name of this being Marry Me Chicken is, if you can make a chicken breast that's like amazing, then you must be a really good cook. That's kind of where I think the name comes from, although I didn't do any research. I guess I could. I could make this like a VH1 pop-up video where it pops up with like a little beep. Marry Me Chicken was designed by blah, blah, blah. I'm probably not gonna do that, but can you imagine? Be pretty cool, right? All right, so here's our minced up garlic. Set that off to the side. Okay, so up next we need a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. So I got an actual like big thing of Parmesan. This is Bell GOC brand. And, never heard of it, but it was $6.99, so a little expensive. From what I understand, when you make this recipe, you really do want to use a good Parmesan cheese, not like a pre-shredded one. You want to shred it yourself, and that's going to help it not clump up, stuff like that, if you're using like nice quality Parmesan. You need a half a cup of Parm, so we're just going to grind this till we get about a half a cup Parmesan. That's probably it right there. And yeah, we're close. That might be enough. Maybe a little more. You know, you can save the rest of it for a future recipe if you want, or you just eat the whole thing like a, a hand fruit. <laughs> All right, there's your half a cup of grated parm. So we'll set that over by the stove as well. I think that's what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get everything ready and set it by the stove. Do you guys like Parmesan? I think it's kind of divisive when it comes to cheeses. Like my wife calls it the stinky cheese, but I love it. Next up, we wanna get some fresh basil. This is fresh basil here, little basil leaves. Wash it up and get a tablespoon worth. Are they chopped? Let me look. I don't think so. It does not show them chopped. Uh, we'll just wash it and set it aside. It's interesting because the picture, it kind of looks like it's chopped, but then it doesn't say to chop it. Guys, you know, when you're writing recipes, think about the Daves out there. We need explicit instruction. <laughs> So we're also gonna need two tablespoons of butter. So I've got my butter out here. Usually there's like a little thing on there that actually tells you where the tablespoon is. So there's our two tablespoons of butter. Get that ready. We need one cup of chicken stock or broth. So we get this out and we just measure out a cup of this. Scotch more, there we go. One cup of chicken broth. We'll set that next to the stove. All right, we're gonna get our heavy cream ready too. Heavy cream we need. This was like all sold out when I went to the store. They only had this fancy Shamrock brand, which was way more expensive than the other stuff, but whatever. I think it's cause like, we're still kind of around the holiday seasons, you know, New Year's, Christmas, that sort of stuff when I'm recording this. And people are probably making a lot of, you know, family recipes, stuff like that. We need one cup of heavy cream as well. We'll put that next to the stove. We're getting all this stuff ready over here. And we've got a little spice blend we'll put in a small bowl. Or, you know, we'll put it on this uh, little chihuahua plate. Is that probably overexposed? Look at that. Baby, it's cold outside and it's a chihuahua. So on that, we're gonna put our three spices, which is gonna be thyme, oregano, and chili flakes. All right, anyway, so you get your oregano, just a quarter teaspoon of this, so tiny bit, tiny bit. I guess this is probably the green stuff I saw in the, in the picture. So it wasn't the basil, it was this stuff, the oregano. And then we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of the thyme leaves as well. And then we do a full teaspoon of chili flakes. Now, I actually thought chili flakes were the same as red pepper flakes, but apparently it's very slightly different. A chili flake is made only from chilies, where this is made from a couple different kind of peppers. But when I look it up, people say you can substitute it no problem. So one teaspoon of this as well. And so that's gonna be our little spice mix. It's gonna go in at some point here in the near future as well. So set these aside. We're also gonna need salt and pepper. I'm just gonna put them over there because it's like mostly to taste. Actually, right as I said that, I had a realization. It's not to taste. The salt and pepper probably go on the chicken. Let me check. But first, let me get, let's get the rest of the ingredients ready. Butter, garlic, chicken stock, heavy cream, Parmesan, chili flakes, oregano thyme. Oh, we need sun-dried tomatoes. Let me grab those. These are sun-dried tomatoes. <laughs> this I think is a big part of the recipe and if you don't like sun-dried tomatoes, you may not like it, but it says we need a third cup of them chopped. Let me set this over here. So let's get a third cup of these and chop them up. One, do we need the, the grease stuff too? So I'm just kind of doing this. I like sun-dried tomatoes, so I think I'm not afraid to use them, but I know some people hate them, so. I also know a lot of people just randomly hate tomatoes, which I don't really get, I like a tomato. Then again, I have my own weird eccentricities. All right, so there's my one third cup sun-dried tomatoes. I'm just gonna chop them, let me dry my hand. So it says to chop those. Mm, my knife's not as sharp as I want, but you get the idea. Chop these up. And I've seen people not chop these and just use them whole in the dish. And I've seen people use a lot more than one third cup. So there's probably some license to make adjustments with this sun-dried tomato section, but I'm gonna follow the recipe that we got recommended and we're gonna see if it's absolutely amazing or not. There we go. There's our sun-dried tomatoes. 
perfect. Let's set all this stuff over near the stove so we can have it when we cook. And right, I brought this chicken back because I looked it up and sure enough, we need to put salt and pepper on the chicken. I thought that might be the case. So basically you're just gonna put some salt. Did I say ketchup? I think I said salt and ketchup. Salt and pepper. Did I say salt and pepper or salt and ketchup? Now see, this piece is a little big. I know we were talking about the, the quarter inch. I don't know if I'm gonna regret not making these thinner. Uh, I wish I had a bigger cutting board too. I'm gonna salt and pepper both sides of these. See, this one's really quite big. There's some salt. Now let's grab some pepper. All right, now we're just gonna put some pepper on there. I like, I like a good amount of pepper. And some of it will, some of this is gonna like wash off, I'll be honest, because a lot of these liquids are gonna end up with the chicken. And when that happens, some of it'll wash into the cream and all that stuff. And it's just gonna end up being integrated in the whole recipe. So it'll be fine if I go a little heavy handed. Last little bit here. And I think we're ready to head over to the stove and start cooking this thing. And it's a quick, easy cook. We're gonna have food really soon. So let's get it ready and get going. Man, okay, so I did this all wrong, but that's okay because I can warn you to do it right. And it's not gonna affect it really, but basically it wanted you to take the flour and put the salt and pepper in the flour and mix it up so it was like seasoned flour, then take the chicken and do this thing where you kinda, like you would do if you were gonna be deep frying something. Basically put the chicken in the flour with all the seasonings to get all that on the chicken, but I still think we're fine. That looks about right to me. So we're just, since we already put salt and pepper on it, we're just going to, uh, you know, dredge it in the flour <laughs> in my pan. I haven't even turned my heat on yet, like so, and it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's still gonna have flour, salt, and pepper on it, but it might be a little easier for you to just go ahead, pre-mix the flour, the salt, and the pepper. How much salt and pepper? Uh, let's see. Well, I'll definitely put the link to the recipe I'm using down below so you can go see the exact amount of salt and pepper, but it's six tablespoons of flour. I think this is gonna be too much chicken to fit in this pan, I'll be honest and I'm not gonna try to overcrowd the pan, so I might not even end up cooking all these pieces. All right, let's at least get this all dredged in flour. That's gonna help you get a crispier chicken in the end. All right, so now we have our chicken ready, we can actually start cooking for real. What we wanna do is turn our stove on, put this pan on medium heat, and then put in two tablespoons of olive oil and our two tablespoons of butter. <clears throat> so I'm gonna add the olive oil first, one and two. And then we'll add the butter, which is kind of weird. Normally I'd use either butter or olive oil when I'm doing something like this, but it wants me to do both. Look at that. Wee. I have these giant tongs I'm using because I can't find my small ones. But I'm just moving the butter around and getting it to all melt. Once it's all melted, we're going to throw the chicken on. All right, my butter's almost melted. <laughs> just going to move it around a little bit more. Maybe I'll just do some of this action. I think we're about ready to start adding chicken. And we're just going to not overcrowd the pan but just add the chicken like so. One, two. I kind of want it a little more sizzle than, the, than I'm hearing. I'm not really sure why I'm not getting any sizzle here. All right, so it says to cook it on each side for four to five minutes. So I've got my heat a little above medium. It calls for medium, so I don't know. Maybe I should turn it back down to medium. Basically four minutes on this side, and then we'll flip them for four minutes. Crispy and good, if I do say so myself. Yeah, definitely not cooking very evenly, but that's just my skillet and my stove that are causing that problem. Now I did go ahead and put some water in a pot and I'm heating that up to a boil. And I'm gonna cook some spaghetti. You don't have to do that part, but I feel like that's gonna be the complete experience. And it does mention that you can do that in the recipe we're using. So this one that's a 165, I'm gonna pull off with this one here. And I'm gonna put it on a paper towel on a plate and set it aside. Okay, we're now going to add our garlic to the same pan. We've already got the chicken off. So we're just gonna add our garlic and saute it for like a minute. And then we're gonna add the chicken stock to it as well. So let's just get this nice and fragrant. My pan's pretty hot. I've got it set a little below medium, but it's still running pretty hot. So I'm probably only gonna do like 40 seconds because <laughs> I don't want to burn this. And the chicken stock will cool the pan and help it not to overcook. See, it's already browning on me. So I'm gonna add the chicken stock now. Just to cool it all down. 
There we go. We want to just get all the stuff off the bottom with a wooden spoon. Bring the heat down to a medium low. Like I was at, or a little under medium, bring it down to between medium and low. Make sure you get all the stuff off the bottom, all that chicken juice. And then once you've done that, you're going to add in your cream and a couple of other things here. Let me look. Yeah. So at this point, we're going to add the cream, the heavy whipping cream, which if you haven't already measured it out, it's one cup worth. We're also going to add our Parmesan cheese, which is a half a cup of that into the mix. And we're going to stir that around. It's looking pretty good. Now we're gonna bring that up to a simmer and let it simmer for a couple minutes, like three minutes probably. And then we're gonna add our chili flakes, our thyme, our other spice mix that we had. I think oregano was in there as well. Okay, so it's been like three minutes. My water's boiling for my pasta, so I'm gonna throw that in and cook it according to the box directions. <laughs> directions. So, pop that in there. What's it say on this? Let's cook the pasta for 10 minutes. I'll set a timer for 10 minutes over there. Uh, this sauce has been simmering for like four or five minutes. And at this point it says we should season it to our taste. Oh, first of all, we're gonna add in the spice mix, the oregano, the thyme, and the, what was the third thing that I put in there? I already forgot. We just talked about it though. Let's stir that up. And then we're gonna add in our sun-dried tomatoes. Hold on, just stir it up a little more. All right, so we're gonna add the sun-dried tomatoes in, which is what the recipe says to do. And then we're gonna season to taste with salt and pepper. I haven't really tasted this yet, so I don't really know how much to use. I'll just throw a little salt and pepper in there. Some salt and a little bit of pepper. I don't want it to be too salty and peppery, but you can always add more salt and pepper later, so I'm not too worried about it. Just add a tiny bit, mix that up. There we go, it's looking pretty good. Now it says once we've got the sun-dried tomatoes in there, we can go ahead and put the chicken back in there into this sauce. So one, two, three, four. So there's my chicken. I want to let it simmer for a few more minutes. I don't know, should we flip it around? I'm going to. I don't know if I should, but I want to get it all covered in the sauce. There we go. I'll let this simmer for a few minutes here, like so. Looks pretty good. All right, so I think this has got to be pretty much done. It's been another couple minutes. This chicken is good. The pasta I'm waiting for, it's got four minutes left. Let me check it here. Yeah, it needs a little longer. So I'm gonna get this all uh, plated up and we'll go over to the counter and we'll test it out. See if it really is the world's best marry me chicken. All right, I'm still not sure what to do with the basil. Like, do I just, it doesn't say to chop it. Should I just like drop it in there in a couple spots, I guess? I don't know, some basil. It just adds a little color, I guess. And basil has a bunch of great flavor too. So if that's supposed to be part of the flavor profile, I definitely want some of that in there. All right, so I'm gonna start off by trying just a little piece of chicken because that's where we should start, right? Should I get a little sun-dried tomato in the bite? Maybe, a little bit, if I can. Over here, there's some, okay. So we're gonna try just a bite of the chicken and then we'll get some pasta and try it as like a whole meal. Wow. Oh my goodness. That's like really good. Like, insanely good. It's because it's got like all this cream on it. Oh my gosh. Hold on. All right, so blown away is my initial reaction to this chicken. I had no clue it was gonna be this insane. So there, that's like the full meal way to do it. Probably get some of the cream because that's like the good stuff and put it on here as well. Just like dump it over the chicken. Maybe get a little on the pasta too. Breakfast of champions right here. I'm terrible at plating. Not a skill I have. You know, the problem I always have with chicken, especially chicken breast, it's always so like, that's the word I'm looking for, dry. But this somehow avoids that, probably because it's like in cream and stuff. All right, let's try it with a little pasta. Take it to the next level here. See, and the, the chicken is super tender as well. Can you see how tender that chicken is? I mean, I've screwed up chicken before where it wasn't tender, so you, know, you just gotta not overcook it, but also not undercook it because you don't want to get sick. So it's a balance. I want more of the cream. <laughs> Get some of that pasta with the cream on it. The cream. Now I'm just eating dinner. Mm. You don't even need the pasta. The pasta is not adding anything to it. It's actually detracting, if I had to be honest. It's like a distraction from the actual chicken, which is the star. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can make pasta for the kids, but all you need is this chicken. It's insane. Healthier anyways than the pasta. Mm. It's honestly too good. That's insane. So this is my first time trying Marry Me Chicken. There might be a better recipe out there, 
But since it's the first time I've had it and it's blowing my mind with how good it is, all I'm gonna say is you need to try cooking this because I'm super impressed with how tasty this is. Now again, I do love sun-dried tomatoes. If you hate them, you might not like it because that is a big part of the flavor profile, but wow, amazing. Definitely cook this, guys. One of my favorites for sure. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next time.